Luke chapter 13. And there were present at the season some that told him of the Galileans. Acts 5.37 Whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Suppose ye that those Galileans, Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans? Because they suffered such things? Oh, look, look, look at these bad people. Look how wicked they are. Judge not least ye be judge, I guess. I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. I don't want to hear about their big sins. What about you? Have you repented of your sins? Have you gotten right with God? Without repentance, you will perish. And there's a crime going on. Salvation without repentance. And many people will perish thinking they're saved. And they're not. That's the mindset of this modern Christianity. You don't need to repent. God loves you. God is so sweet. God is so full of honey. He'll save you no matter what. And they'll go down marching and praying. God loves us. And they don't repent of their sins. And Jesus said they shall perish. What is perish? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish. That's when God throws you out. And when he throws you out, he doesn't throw you a dump. He throws you into the lake of fire. That's perishing. And yet you're still alive. Or those 18. Now, now what we're seeing in Luke 13, verses 1 through 5. Think like, like the news, the, the, the morning newspaper. Those 18 upon whom the tower of Siloam fell. So somewhere... Of Siloam, a tower fell, and there were 18 people that were killed. You know what they were saying? They were wicked people. They would never have died like that. And slew them. Think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwell in Jerusalem? I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. The wages of sin is death. Just because you don't die a massive tormentous kind of death you know if you go to sleep and you don't wake up well you know you're right with God but you got in that violent death thing you know you're not right with God no that's not the case there have been wicked men who have gone off into eternity what do you do with uh, people who have been caused with crime in this country and they put them away lethal ejection there's no pain in that yet, but they've been tried and found guilty of heinous crimes. Deserve. Listen, if this country puts you a death under a death penalty, that's heinous. And they didn't suffer. That death penalty in this, in this country looks to not suffering, though the victims suffer. You gonna say the victims are more heinous than the criminals? You'd be found as a liar. Jesus just said, "For the wages of sin is death." I don't care how you die. You die. If you if you do not repent, you'll repair, you'll perish. Repentance comes before you die. You can't repent after you die. It won't work. He spake also in this parable, a certain man. Well, now he's telling you here's a certain man and here's a parable. You know what he just told you? When I speak a parable. I will tell you I'm speaking a parable you know what religion does this is a parable and Jesus never said it was a parable here is a parable using a certain man and you know what there could have been a real man who had a real fig tree but Jesus is using him as an illustration but a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard well that's interesting he's got grapes and in it he's got a fig tree and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none sounds familiar recognize that story guess who that certain man would be Jesus 
So are you going to tell me that Jesus is a parable? See, this story hasn't happened yet, did it? So now it's a parable. Then said he unto the dresser of the vineyard, Behold, these three years. That's an interesting number he chose. You know how many years he's been in the ministry? Three years. I come seeking fruit on this fig tree. He's come to the nation of Israel. Okay, where's your fruit, guys? And find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it to the ground? Remember that word cumbereth with Martha? Why are, you, why are you taking care of it? Why are you trimming it? Why are you doing all that? Verse 8. Now, verse 7. You would be a, a great example. You would see Moses and God on the mountain. When God says, listen, Moses, leave me alone. I'm going to fry them all. And Moses steps in and says, Lord, they're your people. God, but I ain't seeing nothing out of them. Lord, you promised them the heathen are looking you're gonna give yourself a bad name and he answered and said to him that this would be Moses I'm not real Moses but Moses the type of what we've already read and studied Lord let it alone this year also till I shall dig it about and dung it that's interesting four years that would stretch you off into the book of Acts Till I shall dig it about and dung it. Now that's a little bit more cleaner word than fertilizer. It tells you what the fertilizer is, doesn't it? He's going to fertilize the tree. He's going to dig around the tree. He's going to put a bunch of doo doo. If it bear fruit, well. If not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. How's that? Nay, but except ye repent, ye shall also ye shall all likewise perish. There's no death, there's no burial, and there's no resurrection yet. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. You figure right now they wouldn't let him in, but still. Behold, there was a woman which had a spirit, a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could no wise lift herself up. Now, you've probably seen somebody like this on the street. They're humped over. Pain. Can't look up. Can't grab something on the top shelf. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him. And said to the woman, and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thy infirmity. Now notice she didn't ask for nothing, did she? That mean, angry God looked at her and said, Come here, woman. He laid hands, he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight, straight, <clears throat> and glorified God. Well, amen. Isn't that great? Wouldn't you, wouldn't you glorify God? You got somebody in the hospital, they're coming home, they're, they're much better than they were, or a woman goes to the hospital, she's pregnant and gives birth to a, a healthy baby, everything. You just glorify God, wouldn't you? And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation. Because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day. Whoop-dee-doo. You perform circumcisions on the Sabbath day. You water your cows and your asses on. You lift up your skirt to go potty on the Sabbath day. That's work. And you ever wonder when they do this, what work did Jesus really do in healing? You ever think about it? That's it. There was no work. He didn't pull out a scalpel. He didn't pull out the, the, what's that, that thing the doctor listens to your heart, the stethoscope. He didn't pull out a medical bag. He didn't make a pill. He just, here he just touched her. Other places he just spoke a word. What work is that? That's the same work that he did in Genesis 1. 
And what's the saying? Genesis 1 on the seventh day? And he rested from his work. They just acknowledged Jesus as God through Genesis 1. Though God didn't do nothing, now let me reverently listen. Let there be light. Let there be this. What did God do? And yet on the seventh day, he rested from his work. All he does here is he speak the word, and they're mad because he did work. Genesis 1. So they don't talk all day on seven? They can talk. Well, but they're just, they're, they're, they're nitpicking Jesus. They're trying to get him for anything. This guy. Saying, if the yeah. Pharisees or Sadducees were never touch somebody or talk to somebody on Sabbath day, why is that not work? But when Jesus does it, it yeah. is work. Well, they picked. They they got a guy in the Old Testament picking sticks. Yeah. Wouldn't you exactly. think that this guy on the Sabbath would have to open the doors to the building, light all the candles? Because they didn't have a switch. Just to turn the lights on. Maybe move some things around before the people came. That's work. Think about the preparation before and after for the services in this in this uh, synagogue. Well, that's work. Yeah, but they could have done like that, but they just they just hate Jesus. And what he does for this woman. Now, this woman would have been in the congregation. This guy would be over this woman. Maybe even pray. I hope. I doubt it, though. Looking at this, praying for this woman. It's imagine the pastor of your church getting upset because God answered your prayer because and yet I've seen people who've gotten upset because a family member got saved and somebody else right. did, led them to the Lord Wow indignation that's severe anger that's my own definition severe anger you know what? That shows up too when, when Peter comes back he's, after going to Cornelius' house. The apostles were just indignation against him. What on earth are you going to that house? Peter, of all people. Imagine what rebuke Jonah would have got when he, when he went back home. Where'd you go, Jonah? I went to preach to the Gentiles. You did what? Because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people there are six days in which men ought to work yes Exodus 20 verse 9 in them therefore come and be healed and not on the Sabbath day Wow tell this woman wait 24 hours go 24 more hours she did. You just imagine this woman's wait, you're the leader of this synagogue. You want me to wait twenty four hours before now I can you just imagine she's over there stretching, you know, looking around. Wow, I can see things on there see. And this guy wants me to wait another twenty four hours at least. The Lord said and then the Lord answered him and said Thou hypocrite. Ooh, isn't Jesus nice? Does not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away watering? Don't you water your animals on the Sabbath? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, she's Jewish, whom Satan has bound? Look at that. Satan caused her to be bowed. You know what one of your infirmities may be? Go ask Job. Satan. Not all. Don't go blaming Satan when you got cirrhosis of the liver because you've been drinking liquor every single day for 40 years. Don't blame that on Satan. Because even the government tells you, don't drink and drive. These 18 years being loose from this bond on the, on the Sabbath day. So again, Luke has attacked Peter. They're more concerned about our animals than humans. And Jesus said that woman is more precious than your ox and your ass. How's that? You give them water, but you will not bless that this woman has been 
healed of her infirmity. Save the whales, but kill the soul. Kill the baby. And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed. Amen. Isaiah 45, 24, 1 Peter 3, 16. And all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by... So the religious people get upset, but the people are honoring Jesus Christ. Now, don't you think that put a little bitterness? And what did Pilate say? Envy. You know, it's not, it doesn't feel too good when you're put down in your place, does it? And you, I mean, come on, honestly, if you've been put down, even rightfully been put down, doesn't your body hate it? And again, he said, Whereunto shall I liken the kingdom of God? That's the that's not the physical, that's the spiritual. It is like leaven. Oh wait, a minute, I skipped the whole section. Hold on. Verse 18. Then said he unto what is the kingdom of God like? And whereunto shall I resemble it? The, sp the spiritual kingdom. It is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and cast it into his garden. It grew and waxed great tree. Now, I didn't know, but if you look up mustard, mustard is a tree. I always saw it just as one of those little herbs. But it does become a tree over in the Middle East. And the fowl. Remember Mark chapter 4, who that is? Of the air lodge in the branches thereof. So Jesus just said, with God, Jesus Christ, thereabouts in the land of Jerusalem, you've got Satan and his devils hanging around in his tree. So what do people do? They go walk around with a little mustard seed in a ring or a necklace. They lose the whole point. But you never see this one in the necklace. Again, he said, where to shall I like the kingdom of God? It's like leaven. Now, we already learned that leaven before he told his disciples was the heresy, the hypocrisy of the, of the doctrine of the Pharisees, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was leaven. Now, you got something that's, you got a, a wad of dough. It, it's dough. You put a leaven agent in it, and eventually that leaven agent will take over that whole dough. Jesus is telling you, listen, you got you got me, God, here. Satan's hanging around. The devils are hanging around. The, the Pharisees, the religious people. We've got unclean spirits. It's going to get to the point that it's going to be so the entire loaf of bread is going to be infested. With a leavening agent, yeast, which is one of the things used to make intoxicating liquors. He just said evolution is wrong. It's going to get a lot worse. America used to be a good nation, but you put a little leaven in it. Let's take prayer out of the school. Let's take the Bible out. Look where we are today. Now we're trying to take God totally out of it. Sexual perversion is just legalized. You imagine what that dough is going to look like one day in the future, the Lord tarries. You can't allow, listen, our constitution allows other religions freedom. That's a little leaven that's going to live in a whole bunch. You know what's wrong with America today? We allow those religions to grow, we allow them to be planted. We allow them to spawn. We allow them to be fertilized. We allow them to produce fruit and to shut up the Bible. Why is that happening? The Constitution said you could, they have freedom of speech too. And he went through the cities and villages teaching and journeying through Jerusalem. Toward Jerusalem. He's on his way to Jerusalem. 
He's going to villages. He's preaching in the streets. He's preaching on the beaches. He's preaching on the shores. He's preaching in the, in the synagogue. He's preaching, preaching, preaching. And he never had a church building of his own. It said, uh, uh, they? Then said one unto him, Lord, are there are there Jew that be saved? A uh, few, excuse me. Are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, for many, for many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. According to Matthew, that straight gate is the, is the narrow way to salvation which leads to life. Many people are going to try to get to that gate, but they're not going in. What's that many? Religion. What religion will not tell you how to get to their God? Well, even Catholics do. They get to Mary, God. Get to the Pope, God. Get, get to Father God. And when they get to that, they fall short. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes down to the Father but by me. Now, with Mark chapter 4 and Luke 13, 24, everybody will not get saved if you're, if you're going out with the gospel. Get that. Many of the people that hear you, listen to you, receive a gospel tract from you, however you do it, are not going to get saved. Matthew tells us few. The parable of the sower and the seed. The fewest of the few that do get saved are going to go out and do something. So if you're venturing out today for the first time, I'm going to go out and serve God. I'm going to go all the world and preach the gospel. You better rest assured right now, they all will not get saved. Your entire family will not get saved. All your co-workers at your job will not get saved. May God bless a couple co-workers. May God bless a few members of your family, but not all. And anybody tells you all, they are lying to you. Most of my families died out. Many of them are gone into hell. And people don't, like, don't want to hear that, but that's the truth. Few of my family members, I think I can count them on my fingers, who have died, are in heaven now. I only think both my fingers. But I, I'm going to need to take off my shoes and socks to count how many of my family members are going to hell. Even witnessing to them. There's a couple, I don't know. I don't know where they are. Shoes, excuse me. But don't ever get to the fact that they will all be saved. That's a false teaching. When once the master of the house has risen up and has shut to the door, he began to stand, and they and you began to stand without, and then knock at the door, say, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he shall answer, say unto you, I know you not whence ye are those are the most terrifying words that you can ever hear god tell you and i believe that note is in matthew 7. let's look at it like this let's let's talk about god for a minute and i'll give you another illustration you do everything your religious leader tells you to do. And you do it for God all hearted. But you got the wrong God. And you go and die. And you will die. And the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And you go 
let, let's let's take this first, okay? You're not gonna knock on no doors when you die in glory. But you go knocking on that door. Peter ain't gonna be there. It's gonna be the Lord Jesus Christ. And you're gonna say, Here I am, your wonderful saint, Carissa. I'll give her that name. Saint Carissa has come to the I'm thinking of another name, but I'll use Carissa. Then I just help all those orphans. Then I just take care of all those people. Then I just sacrifice my life for them. They're now saying Carissa was a villain, by the way. Uh, and Jesus is going to turn to Carissa and say, Who are you? I'm Mother Carissa. Well, that's funny because I don't know who you are. Depart from me. Ye workers of iniquity into the, into the lake of fire. But I'm. I'd like to have that. You see how dangerous religion is? But I sold magazines. I. Whatever I did. And Jesus to tell you, I never. Matthew 7. That, that's even more bold. I never knew you. Forget about being saved before you're saved as religions will teach you. You know, you're predestined. I never knew you, Matthew 7. Here, I know you not. If Jesus Christ doesn't know who you are, you're not going into glory. How is he going to recognize you? You got to repent and you got to believe on him on who he is. And just saying a prayer is not going to work. Lord, this Baptist, he sat at my house, and we had coffee, and I bowed my head, and he prayed for me. <clears throat> Sorry. Go to hell. And I don't say that laughingly. I'm, I'm a minister of people of the gospel. I want people saved. I flip beads that don't work to have Jesus Christ tell you I never knew you you're damned and you can have all the doctrines doctrines that in the last days oh, we'll all be raised up we'll all do our purgatory we'll all do our penance and all stuff that's not true that's a lie out of the pit of hell John 8 44 You've got to be known by Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Then shall ye begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence. When was that? Where we are presently in Luke. Remember, he sat one time, just a couple chapters, he sat in the Pharisee's house at dinner. Lord, didn't I give you a dinner? Didn't I feed you? Didn't I give you wine? Didn't I allow you in my synagogue? Didn't we allow you to preach in our, our town? And thou hast taught in our streets, street preaching. Lord, you came to my town. Didn't that save me? Billy Graham came to our big city. I'm saved. But he shall say. Matthew 7, 21 and 23. 25, 12 and 41. I tell you. I know you not. Whence ye are. Depart from me all ye workers of iniquity. You know what ye are? I don't care what denomination you are. There are no Baptists in heaven. There are no Yankees in heaven. There's no Southerners in heaven. There's no Jewish people in heaven. There are Christians. Oh, that's our... No, you're not a Christian. You don't know what a Christian is. I'm talking about the Bible definition of a Christian. Not what the media calls you. And anybody who has not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, look what he says. All ye workers of iniquity. 
Everything you do to be saved outside of believing on Jesus Christ is iniquity. How can you pay for your sins yourself when every day you're living for yourself and whatever God you're serving, think you're serving God, you are adding to your sin even more. So you can say, you can go to the priest all you want. And he can tell you whatever you need to do to be to be washed of your sin. You are creating more sin by going to that priest in iniquity because you have not turned to Jesus Christ who is hanging in front of your church. I'm not saying all Catholics are, are lost. They believe the fundamentals. They can be saved. They just don't enjoy it. But when you don't believe on Jesus Christ, it's an iniquity. Now, open up your, your, your yellow pages, if you know what that is today. Find the, the, the tab that says churches. Run all those religions down, all those churches' denominations, and you'll find the definition of iniquity. Okay? Then go run to your, your judo and your karate and your, your uh, yogurt and all the other stuff. That is also iniquity. You say Baptists are iniquity? Yes, but it's not the blood of Jesus Christ. The tens of thousands of Baptist churches I'm finding around this area. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Does that, does that sound like glory? When ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, no, Ishmael, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves thrush out. Guess who he's talking to with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Don't come to me with your pedigree that you're a Jewish person of Abraham. That ain't going to work. So pedigrees and degrees will not get you to glory. Like God's going to, oh, you got a ring. I'm so sorry. I didn't come on in. You were buried with a sheepskin. Oh, man, I didn't see that. I'm sorry. Come on in. A secret handshake. That don't work. Huh? Your holy underwear. Yeah, that don't work. I want they bury him now. Holy underwear. How about walking up to God and say, Hey, my family were of the family of the presidents of the United States. God's going to say, Yeah, but there's a name above. I got to. There's a. I always want to quote it on the streets. I can't find it. I gotta find it in Acts. There's a name above all names whereby a man should be saved. Coming up with a name other than Jesus Christ is not a name that will get you saved. Well, I was under pastor such and such. That ain't gonna do it. That way ain't gonna do it. <coughs> and don't tell me I know many people who worship the pastor more than God. If that pastor would leave, they would leave. If that pastor would die, they would die. So it's not names, it's not religion. And they shall, uh, let's see, Revelation 7, 9, and 10. They shall come from east and from west and from north and from south and shall sit down in the kingdom of God. And behold, there are they, yeah, behold, there are last which shall be first and there are first which shall be last. Imagine that. He just told these people in his time in Jerusalem, there are going to be people who are going to come from all directions of the earth to come to be with me in the millennium, and you're not. Now, can you imagine Jesus walking and talking in the streets of Israel, telling you you're not going to heaven, and then you're going to go preach a message, you're going to heaven? That's a lie. And yet today, Jesus tells you, you're going to hell by anything other than believing on me to be saved. And then you go to church and you hear something else. Jesus said in his word, unless it's me, you're not saved. You're going to hell. You get people all the time coming, we're Christians. Do you know what Christian is? I wouldn't do what you're doing. You're turning the people away. You haven't even read your Bible. And you're going to say you're a Christian and you're living right. He just said that you preach in our streets. 
I guess you never read Luke 13. And then the same day there came certain of the Pharisees. They didn't get it, did they? Did they get the message? Absolutely not. They didn't repent. They didn't get ready. Saying unto him, get thee out. Get out of here. And depart hence. For Herod shall, for Herod will kill thee. Well, we're going to call the police. We're going to have you arrested. By the way, Herod, in a way, will have him killed through Pilate. The government, the Roman government will kill him because of the Pharisees. How's that? And he said to him, go ye and tell that fox. I have no idea why he said that. Study the characteristics of a fox, which I never have. Actually, you tell me if you show me a fox, I think, ooh, that's a cute little animal. But I guess his beauty is more than his personality. Study fox. Behold, I cast out devils. And I do cures today, which which earlier you were upset. And tomorrow. And the third day I shall be perfected resurrection. He just told the fairies, you know what? I'm going to die. I'm going to be buried. And I'm going to be rose again. And that's perfection. So you go stick that and stick that in your in your collection plate. Because I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto me but the Father. That's what he just said there. That's not written there, but that's what he said. I'm the perfect. I'm the perfect one. Nevertheless, he spoke about his resurrection, spoke about his death. I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following, for it cannot be that I that a prophet perish out of the It ain't my time, guys. Jesus knows the day that and the hour and the year and the month that he's going to die. It ain't now. It ain't now. So don't you don't worry about me with Herod. He ain't gonna kill me. <clears throat> Thank you for your concern, but this ain't the time yet. You can run about your business now. <laughs> that's what he said. Oh Jerusalem, Jerusalem. That's a verily, verily. Which killeth the prophets. With the Pharisees that told him, you know what? Herod's going to kill you. Yeah. You know what? You killed the prophets. And stones them that are sent unto thee. How oft would I have gathered thy children together, as a hen does gather her broad under her wings, and you would not. Free will. That threw Calvinism out the window. I wanted you to come. I take care of you as a mother hen, but you would not. He didn't force the chicks to come under his wing. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Look what it is looks like today. Imagine what it looked like 70 AD, 71 AD, 72 AD. And verily I say unto you, ye shall not see me until the time come when ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. And close off that chapter.